when I went to medical school, that's all I kept hearing about. But you know, it's funny. I watched bodybuilders that got off the juice, and like I started this discussion, aged a few years, and they look like freaking corpses. It's like, what happened? You built, you built, you built, you built, and pulled a plug and it disappeared. So I, it got me thinking that there must be something else that's a lot stronger than chasing our tails with how much can I build, how much can I build, how much can I build, how much can I build. There must be a far greater force behind us destroying the muscle mass. Does that make sense? You know, because it, you, know, you guys know, how many people, you, like you get sick and you haven't trained for three days, how bad do you look? <laughs> what the hell happened? Isn't it amazing? Do you follow what I'm saying? So there's a very strong catabolic pull. Remember, anabolic, build up. Catabolic, break down. The anab our ability to be anabolic with drugs and all, and all this shit these guys put in their system, it doesn't even compare to the catabolic pull that will pull them back into the grave. You see, are you with me? Okay? And if you need any evidence of that, just get sick just get old or just get off the juice and watch it all disappear. So I started looking for the answer. And this guy Lee came out with this amazing article about myostat. And my, Lee doesn't talk to anybody anymore. I was the last guy to sort of corner him and get him on the phone before Pharma locked him down and he's not allowed to talk to anybody. He's afraid patents are gonna be stolen and all that stuff. But the amazing thing is, is you know, this protein in the body called myostatin inhibits muscle growth and hypertrophy. It inhibits muscle growth and hypertrophy. It's very important to understand what it's doing in the body. So it's stopping muscle from growing and repairing and doing all these wonderful things we want it to do so that we can get, get strong and we can get big and we can do all those things. And we know from our examples in the animal kingdom, and even now we have some human examples of animals and people that are myostatin null, meaning they have no myostatin, okay? Uh, example is the Belgian blue bull or the Piedmontese bull. You know, we're all urban people here. We're on Long Island, you know, we live in the tri-state area. But if you go out to uh, Wyoming, you know, and you go out to these places, you go out to, and you go to a county fair, they'll wheel out one of these Belgian blue bulls just for fun so everybody can look at it. And the thing is so big, it's just dripping with muscle. And I've actually talked to the ranchers and I'm like, do they do any push-ups? You know, <laughs> like they don't basic, they don't do anything. They're kind of lazy. They just walk around. I don't know where the muscle comes from. It just comes from having no myostatin in their body. The muscle's so huge on these animals, it's crazy. Piedmontese bull, same thing. There are many examples like that in the animal kingdom of uh, animals that have no myostatin. Um, there's also a, an example, has anybody ever seen the German boy that they're following around now in the literature? You saw that? Okay. So there's a, there's a kid from Germany and his parents were, you know, very athletic and large people. And it just so happens that this kid came along and I guess the parents were all both lacking one gene for myostatin. But remember, we each have two genes, one from our mom, one from our dad. This kid got no myostatin from the, no myostatin producing gene from his mom, got no myostatin gene producing, gene producing myostatin from his, from his dad, so from the mom and the dad, and that's it. He doesn't produce, he's completely myostatin null. And there's like a picture of him, I don't know, he, like in diapers holding like a five pound weight up like this straight up in front of him. It's amazing, they're amazingly strong. I have vetted this thing the best I can. I've spoken to uh, ranchers, do they have less, a, a shorter lifespan? Are they more sick? Are they, I mean, I'm just interested in these animals. This is how it started, you know, more than a decade ago for me. And they all reported back to me. They're like, no, they're just as healthy as, you know, as, as can be. They're just as strong as can be. If anything, they have less disease. That was, was reported to me by one ranch. They said, oh, they're a lot healthier. Isn't that interesting? Yes, but do we really want to gain fat? We don't. This has nothing to do with fat. In fact, these, guys, these, these animals have a very, very, very low percentage of body fat. So they don't make for good steak. Too tough, you know? 
So there's not a lot you can do with these animals other than parade them around a county fair. There's a, there's a famous human example we have, Flex Wheeler, my buddy Flex. Um, and uh, I don't know, I, I, we, we talked a lot about it on the radio show that I did not too long ago, but Flex, uh, it, it, actually he does have myostatin in his body, it's, it's, uh, it's often misquoted, but he doesn't have the receptor for myostatin. And that makes him very freaky, because even though he has myostatin, the body isn't reading myostatin. So that's why he's, he was, it was so easy for him to gain muscle mass, because of course he had kidney problems. And that's what you don't, you don't hear about. That's why it was so difficult for him to train all these years, as he had a bum kidneys, you know? So, you know, ultimately he needed a transplant. Um, but isn't it amazing? Here's a guy with no energy, no effort, no effort, no energy as a function of his kidney disease, but he just so happens to have this myostatin thing going on, and bam, he's able to build, like, I think, the best physique I ever saw in my life was Flex Wheeler. And for, fucking Flex impressed me. I mean, all you could say about him was make him bigger and make him harder make him bigger and more ripped. Because shit, if he didn't have perfect shape, he didn't lack a single body part. He had little teeny tiny joints and big, big muscle, you know? His symmetry was perfect. You divide him down the middle, both sides looked the same, perfect. His proportions, his calves looked the right with his biceps, his wasn't, neck wasn't too big, waist was super small. I mean, shape, symmetry, proportions, everything was there. But that's the only thing you could say, man, make him bigger and more ripped. So anyway, I started saying to myself, well, wait, wait, how can we utilize this? How can we block myostatin? And, you know, I wasn't the only one that think, was thinking this. I mean, so, so is Wyeth, so is, uh, you know, so are the other drug companies. They're working on injections. They're working on vaccines to block myostatin. And that's right. They're thinking the right way, too. Because it makes a lot more sense than chasing our tails with testosterone and growth hormone and all these other things to build, to build, to build, anabolic, 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 as shit, it's chicken shit. The greater thing is to stop the cat catabolism, to block the blocker. Block what's blocking our muscle mass gains. Make sense? And those animal examples and the flex wheelings, those are just little examples of just scratching the surface. So sure, there's drugs. But they're all in development. There's no drug currently available, and there won't be fun for a while, okay? We don't, you know, it's sort of foggy why these drugs have failed in research. We're getting these quasi-legitimate um, uh, quasi explanations from the drug companies as to why they, why they failed in research and why they're not pursuing them as drugs. Uh, they're claiming they're safe. I mean, I, I don't know, but I, I, I know this much. I think with a normal physiology, it's probably, it probably would be inert to our benefit if we were to be able to inhibit myostatin and not block it completely. Does that make sense? You take a vaccine and you're blocking it, that's it. And, and somehow, you know, we were born with myostatin, you know? We're not myostatin, no. We're not genetically missing not myostatin. If we were, we'd probably be fine from a health standpoint. But I think the better approach is to inhibit myostatin as opposed to blocking it completely. So I set out to look for something in nature so that I could provide it to people to block myostatin that existed in nature. And for those of you who have listened to my CDs or heard my talks before, you know that I have this steadfast and very stubborn belief that there is no such thing in the world as a disease that doesn't have a cure in nature, okay? Drug companies don't make cures. Nature makes cures. None. Drug companies don't make cures. None. Isn't that amazing? The only thing I could find was an antibiotic. Mm. I guess an antibiotic kind of returns you to your pre-morbid condition. And then I scratched my head and said, well, why, is the, why is Big Pharma interested in antibiotics? Repeat performance. They know you're going to get sick again. Safe bet. You see? So they make lifestyle drugs. I believe there's nothing in nature that doesn't have an opposite countermeasure. You can call it religion. You can call it physics. You can call it yin and yang. You, I, you call it whatever you want, but I don't believe that there isn't an equal and opposite reaction everywhere. 